Hello again. Another misleading video because last time when we worked on when I worked on the Delta Wing, I promised to do something on the tires and we ended up only looking at some of the spreadsheet stuff and not doing anything on the tires. Today will be a little different, but probably not even that different. So let's see what we're going to do. This is the Delta Wing. I'm recreating this in, in R Factor and showing you the behind the scenes work that has to be done in the physics to get this going fairly realistically. I'm not shooting for, for absolute realism, just sort of a, a behind the scenes look, what I do and how such a car ends up working. Uh, the Delta Wing can make place for the spreadsheet. Now, last time I showed you all these curves and how that works and all these things that I can plot. But important with tires is the, the tire load the load on the tires and I have not prepared this but we have to figure out the sort of loads we see on the tires and especially with the car being so irregular it has a lot of weight on the rear end and very little on the front end and the same goes for the aero so we have to get some idea of what these aero forces are and in general what the tire loads will be at a higher speed so I'll have this on my second screen that you cannot see and I have some leftover fields here that I'll use so The rear weight was 72 and a half, if I recall. And total weight was 5, well, let's take 575. There will be more because of the downforce, naturally. So that gives me front tire load and then rear tire load of this in newtons times what's on the rear end but of course we got two tires there just over 2000 newtons and the front load is then this times five times nine point eight eight times and then one minus the rear percentage so these are the tire loads with the car just sitting in the pits. Now this is fairly, uh, this is a starting point, but we get we get downforce, and when you look at the specs, there are the specs again. We have 75% downforce on the rear, and we have a drag coefficient of 0.35, and a top speed of 3.15. Okay, now. I have to cheat a bit here and show you uh, some other things that we will get to later to get this going and understand the downforce that the car may have. So, uh, downforce rear, 75%. It does 315 k's. How much drag is that? It says we have a coefficient of drag of 0.35, which is fine, but we don't really know the frontal area or anything. I, it's not here. Um, and I think it says that a lift drag ratio... Oh right, this is another one of those things that they say the center of pressure is 75% rear and here below... There it is. So here we have 75% rear and then here they say 76% rear with a lift drag ratio larger than 5 okay so 76% hello are you still awake? <laughs> I don't know if you are but I'm just going to continue because I'm I enjoy this stuff isn't it weird? so 76% at the back and lift drag is greater than 5 we already made the engine which is brilliant we already gave uh, the engine 8% losses and we'll have a quick sneak at things like rolling resistance 
adding a slight value is not the most important one. Arrow drag will be the really important one. But let's add some sort of a drag. And now arrow. I'm going to give this car a drag. I don't know what because we do have the drag coefficient but we don't know the frontal area so we don't really know the total drag of this car. So where is it body? Drag. Mm, point three. Let's start with that. Okay. Now you can already see there is this prediction going on that with this drag, with this engine, with this rolling resistance and, and other frictions, it predicts the top speed of the car will be 311. So that's not too far off, but we don't have downforce here yet. And downforce doesn't increase drag by itself, although it does press the tires into the ground harder, which will increase the rolling resistance. So we'll get to the, all that later, but I need a reasonable drag value and then say, well, the lift to drag ratio is 5, and that means the downforce is at least 5 times more than the drag. Still with me? Well, let's say 0.25. That's too much. 330. Okay, I'm going to predict for a first guess that when the prediction says 320 k's, then the downforce will add the rolling resistance and will probably have 315. So that gives me a uh, drag of 0.275. And that's times speed squared, giving you the actual force. So, okay, great. Back to the, where were we, tires. Drag. 275. Lift drag. Greater than 5, I don't know. 5.2? Let's try that first. And then downforce is 5.2 times that. Speed. Well, let's say 315. We have to do meters per second, so let's divide it by 3.6. Okay, and what is the downforce then? That, oh, sorry. coefficient actually force is speed squared where is it squared times the coefficient right and then we get front down force rear down force and the rear down force was the down force type 76% and the front downforce is the downforce times 1 minus 76 percent. Oh, right, that's brilliant. We're still just going straight. No cornering, and I will have to look at cornering because only the outside tire takes the load. And that means the outside rear tire takes the load when you take a corner. Um, say total load front and total load rear because we have a static load that the, the car weighs something and the downforce load uh, yes aha made a mistake already because this is on the axle and not on the tire half these okay so when we travel at uh, 315 kilometers an hour, the total tire load on the f each front tire uh, is about 2,000 newtons, and on each rear tire is about 6,000 newtons. But that's without cornering. And how do we get cornering into the equation? Well, I'm going to say that all the cornering load is taken by the outside rear tire, which is not entirely true, but almost true for an estimation of how, what is my final, my highest tire load that may occur. Um, I heard in a video that the car pulls about 3, sorry, uh, nearly 4G in, in the really fast corners. So the weight is 575 kilo. 
that means the force applied to the car at the center of gravity is four times that. Uh, force, sorry, five times, no, four G, I said, if it's, well, let's make cornering G, corner, force, well, let's say four G, and uh, let's say the force is then 4g times the mass times 9.81. That's quite a high force. Now this force acts above the ground, it acts at the center of gravity. And I haven't entered this yet, but let's say it's 0.3 meters from the ground. That creates a torque of this cornering force times the CG height so many newton meters and the rear end has a track 1.74 tires and that means um, um, oh don't look at the clock something may have changed so that's the rear track, and knowing all this, uh, the cornering g-force and gravity heights and stuff, we can now calculate the uh, tire load difference on the left side and the right side caused by the cornering, which is uh, fairly simple to calculate, thankfully. Which is the torque divided by the track. So taking this corner, assuming all this load is taken by the rear tire, uh, if we have a right hand corner, the left outside rear tire will add almost 4000 Newton and on the right side it will be subtracted. So that is very useful. Uh, now we can come up with the final forces. We assume the front take equal load, which is uh, a simplification, but given the narrowness, fine for now. And the rear, we had a load with the tire load, including the vehicle weight and the downforce. And now we say, well, we take this right hand corner and we calculate it that this much gets added. And on the other side, it gets subtracted. So if we take a corner at 250 kilometers an hour at 4G, we almost have a very lightly loaded inside rear and a very heavily loaded outside rear. So this is a reasonable estimate of the maximum tire load we may see on the rear tires. On the front tires, it's only this. However, there's also braking, uh, which will add to the, the tire load. But the difference uh, in braking is that unlike cornering where everything is taken by basically one tire uh, braking evenly spreads the tire load over two two front tires and subtracts an amount from the rear tires so I don't expect a huge increase in tire load there but let's do it anyway same type of calculation um, force same formula uh, 4G 9.81 to get newtons times the mass of the car. So if we have 3D we get less. And torque. It's the same if we do the 4G, but it's the force times the center of gravity height. And now we need the wheelbase, which I remember is this. Load uh, was axle load difference is the torque divided by the wheelbase. So the front axle increases with 2200 newtons and the rear axle decreases its load with 2200 newtons. So per tire is half of that. Oh, 0.1, well that would be ideal if we could do that. Sadly we cannot. 0.5. So 1100 something newtons gets added to 
the 1600 newtons here however uh, this is not completely right because braking you know cornering uh, at, at greater speeds than 250 is fairly unlikely uh, most corners won't be that quick but braking is something you do from the highest speed so 300 something so we will increase the speed at which we brake um, yes let's increase that they say 350 I'll believe them this will change the cornering stuff calculated here we just remember that this was actually more likely to be 8500 something um, so right at 300 and something kilometers an hour the tire load on the front is 2100 basically and braking at 4g which I think is fair I don't know quite quite a lot there isn't that much drag uh, I think 4g is a, is a reasonable estimate of the maximum braking you can uh, expect it will still add the same amount but now we add it to this 2000 something so the front tire load yeah, typing is not easy. Would be the 2100-ish plus the braking load. So we are a little over 3000 newtons, which is probably the maximum the, those tires ever see. It could be a little bit higher because in cornering, uh, some load will be taken by the outside front tire. So I'm going to assume here a maximum load of 4000 for the front, which is probably a bit higher, but too high but gives me a reasonable estimate if I spec the tire within this load range for the front and this load range for the rear we should be good to go so uh, this was another video where I promised to work on the tires and haven't so perhaps the next time I'll be doing another misleading interview uh, interview misleading video or I may actually get to the tires so I don't know what will happen thank you for watching uh, I hope this is still uh, interesting to some degree and uh, I hope you tune in uh, next time. Bye bye.